Welcome to hell! My friends, on August 1st, the last troops of the Wagner PMC left their base of Malakin, located in the Krasnodar Krai region, and they all relocated to Belarus, roughly a month after their infamous mutiny and march on Moscow. Let's say that Lukashenko got a bit too excited about his new army. Legend says that Grandpa Lukashenko personally greeted Wagnerians at the border holding a shovel. And he couldn't hold himself from making jokes about invading Poland. Which made Putin extremely uncomfortable. I mean, look at this awkward smile. Putin's face is like when you go on a double date and your friend starts revealing very embarrassing things about you. With that being said, Wagner's arrival in Belarus opened a new chapter for the organization. Look at how many franchises they just opened! But what are their plans now? Chilling men settle down with Belarusian chicks like some famous YouTuber or go to war with NATO over the Suvlaki Gap? Oops, my bad, I meant the Sovalki gap. How about we just ask Uncle Prigo about his plans? On July 19th, Yevgeny Prigozhin made a speech surrounded by hundreds of Wagnerians, perhaps thousands. It was decided that we would stay here in Belarus for some time, during which we will make of them the second army of the world. Then we will set off on a new path to Africa, but perhaps we will return to the war in Ukraine. All we know is that only a week after his speech regarding Wagner's new adventure in Africa, a coup took place in Niger. But then something special happened. Under cheering applause, a man wearing jeans and a baseball cap appeared. Dmitry Utkin, the original Wagner, spoke in front of his men. This is his first video appearance ever. This is not the end. This is just the beginning of the biggest work in the world that will be done very soon. Nothing to worry about. And here we learn from a NATO general that Wagner's move to Belarus has little military significance. Poland bolsters its border defenses. 10,000 additional troops will be sent to the border with Belarus. In typical Wagner Maskerovka, we're only fed little clues as to what they might do next. On one end, Prigozhin says they're bolstering their ranks and preparing for Africa. Meanwhile, AP reported, over 100 mercenaries belonging to the Russian-linked Wagner Group in Belarus have moved close to the border with Poland. Apparently, this Wagnerian detachment decided to troll the Poles by leaving some stickers on border posts near the Suvalki Gap linking Belarus to Kaliningrad. And they made sure to take plenty of selfies to commemorate this event. And tensions quickly rose up when two Belarusian combat helicopters entered Polish airspace on August 3rd while maneuvering with the Wagner PMC. The Independent summarized what we all have in mind. Why are Wagner mercenaries in Belarus? And please forget silly articles like this one. Oh my god, what a Wagner mercenary revealed on a dating app. So in this video, we'll explore what the musicians might be up to. Truth is, Wagner made two movies already about their campaigns in Africa. And I guess it was time for them to wrap up the trilogy. There were rumors that Wagner was hiring French and Arabic translators. Oh my god, surprise, surprise, the two official languages of Chad are French and Arabic. On top of that, on the 5th of August, the Wagner Insider wrote the following on Telegram. Should the situation in Africa not ease up, Wagner will go to Africa entirely. Contracts have already been signed. This leads us to a big question. How many Wagnerians are we even talking about at this point? The first major Wagnerian base in Belarus is located in the small village of Tsil. In fact, Wagner occupies an abandoned Belarusian military base that was there. The surrounding village had over 1,400 inhabitants in 2009. But since then, the base has closed down, and there are less than 150 people remaining, meaning there's lots of empty housing available, plus all the already existing military infrastructure. And to be honest, is it me or the base looks exactly like the one from Escape from Tarkov? 
not to thank the people of Belarus for allowing Wagner to get a new home. On July 3rd, in respect for the locals, Wagnerians fired some howitzers in honor of the Belarus Independence Day. I wonder if American or French troops also celebrate the independence of the African countries they're deployed in. In June, we could notice the field camp that consisted of roughly 300 tents. By the 14th of July, more and more columns of Wagnerian trucks and pickups drove towards Belarus. You can see how new tents appeared on June 30th, followed by a new park of vehicles and supplies by the 18th of July. We can even see the geolocation of Prigozhin's speech. These latest images suggest Wagner has now begun to move personnel in large numbers to Belarus. And it does not seem to be like some sort of trick. This is where they are redeploying. Meanwhile, Belarusian opposition made sure to track all Wagnerian movements into the country. Here they reported the arrival of the 5th convoy of Wagnerians, with over 90 vehicles of all types. During that time, Polish media confirmed the arrival of a total of 9 convoys of the PMC into Belarus, which they estimated at 5,000 troops. Meanwhile, in Lithuania, they think that Minsk is preparing infrastructure for 8,000 fighters. In response, the country's Minister of National Defense said that this does not change the security situation in the region and should not be of a greater concern to Lithuania. According to him, Wagner will only use Belarus as a logistics base for operations in Africa. He might have a point, because this is also when we got very interesting information regarding the new Wagnerian commander in charge of the operations in Belarus. According to internal reports, the commander of the Wagner group in Belarus has the call sign Pioneer, or Pioneer in Russian. Apparently, his real name is Sergei Chupko, born in Chernivtsi in Ukraine. Somewhere in the mid-1970s, he immigrated to Russia in the early 90s and served in the Russian Airborne Forces from 1994 to 2002. He's then believed to have joined Wagner in 2017 and took part in the fighting in Syria near Derezor in 2018, facing Kurdish and American forces. Unlike the other commanders of Wagner that got known for their combat leading capabilities, Pioneer got noticed for his organizational skills, and that's how he took care of the logistics operations of the PMC. Some Wagnerians even wondered how a guy with no real combat experience became the head of the direction during the military operations in the Central African Republic. The following year in Libya, Pioneer was nicknamed Wagner's curator as he was responsible for all operations and reported directly to Utkin. I mean, at this point, everything is lined up for Wagner preparing for massive operations in Africa, especially since Niger and other Russian allies are facing an imminent military operation against them from the ECOWAS nations. Perhaps Wagner is actually preparing something else. While satellite imagery showed a lot of vehicles, sources on the ground reported that there is no heavy equipment present. That's most likely because on the 12th of July, Wagner handed over more than 2,000 armored vehicles to the Russian government. This arsenal includes hundreds of tanks, air defense systems, as well as all sorts of artillery pieces. Meanwhile, Belarusian opposition reported that Wagner's sixth column into the country consisted of about 2,000 men aboard 100 to 120 vehicles. Now, by doing quick math, quick math, that means roughly 20 musicians per vehicle. I mean, it's very possible considering a Ural truck seats 27 and a bus 50 soldiers. 2,000 men would easily fit in a column of 20 Ural trucks, 29 buses, and various pickups. Using that same logic, nine columns of roughly 100 vehicles each could already amount to 18,000 Wagnerians on Belarusian soil. And that's not all, because a Belarusian civilian filmed the 11th and last Wagnerian column entering Belarus. So the strength of Wagner's contingent in Belarus could be plus or minus 20,000 troops. At the same time, a lot of the vehicles in the columns were meant for supplies. For example, in this sample footage, we see 43 vehicles, of which 20 are pickups, 2 city buses, 4 Ural trucks, 9 minibuses, and 8 supply trucks. That means a maximum of 300 Wagnerians could have been transported here. So proportionally, for 120 vehicles, as many as 840 troops could be transported. If all columns followed a similar format, 
we would be closer to 10 to 11,000 fighters of the PMC in Belarus. Now, during the mutiny, we were told that Wagner had roughly 25 to 30,000 men within their ranks. What happened to all the others? Here comes Callsign Brest, who is an instructor of the PMC. He shared some details regarding the life of the PMC after their move to Belarus. The most important revelations were the following. Apparently, only a small number of Wagnerians have signed contracts with the Russian Ministry of Defense. Members of the PMC that did not pass the professional selection were sent to the reserve due to the lack of combat activity in Ukraine. Many were also sent on a well-deserved vacation because some of them spent 20 months in Africa followed by a 12-month tour in Ukraine. We can suppose they trimmed perhaps a third up to half of their force. In which case, Wagner in Belarus still represents roughly 15,000 men. The latest Wagnerian convoys went towards Asipovice, which is also the location of where they trained the Belarusian army. And to be honest, it was necessary because Belarusian troops were far from combat ready. This is when Ivan knew he fucked up. The Belarusian ground forces consist of 16,000 troops, so it shouldn't be too long to train. The goal of Wagner instructors is to help the Belarusian army modernize, re-equip, and quickly introduce their experience of modern military conflicts. Meanwhile, right after the mutiny, some claim that Wagner was sent to Belarus to prevent Belarusian opposition from taking over the country using the Belarusian foreign volunteers in Ukraine like the Kastus Kalinowski regiment fighting alongside Ukrainian forces. But according to certain reports, there are only about 500 Belarusian foreign fighters in Ukraine, without even taking into account K and wounded military personnel within their ranks. I don't see why dispatching 8 to 15,000 Wagnerians would be necessary to deal with such a threat. According to the following pictures and posts, Wagner trained with Belarusian soldiers from the 51st Artillery Brigade as well as with Paris of the 38th Separate Air Assault Brigade. Even a major general of the Belarusian police, Nikolai Karpenkov, took part in this military exercise. Wagnerians taught their Belarusian counterparts how to evacuate wounded soldiers from the battlefield, the use of UAVs for reconnaissance, artillery guiding and kamikaze strikes, and essentially wrap up everything they learned in Ukraine regarding combined arms operations. Now, another interesting thing was revealed on the 25th of July. Allegedly, Wagner's recruitment centers across Russia are slowly getting shut down. And that, in the near future, new recruitment offices will be opened in Belarus. Could it be a gateway for all the Belarusian soldiers they just trained to join the PMC? For 1,000 well-trained Belarusian soldiers going to fight in Ukraine. Perhaps as mercenaries under the banner of the Wagner PMC. I don't think that Belarusian soldiers and conscripts are that well paid, so there could be a financial incentive to do so. Apparently, Wagner also opened another base in Paplavie, 30 minutes away from Tsel. The area consists of 15 buildings, of which 10 are military warehouses. And here's a ground view of the base. They're clearly digging some sort of fortress in the middle of the woods. Let's be honest, it will be very hard for satellites to determine the exact number of Wagnerian fighters under the dense foliage of the forest. And there is another Wagner base being built near Narolia. This one is special because it's located only 50 kilometers away from the border with Ukraine. Actually, there is yet another camp of the PMC close to the Ukraine border, actually even closer than the other one. The Wagner PMC established a new base near the Zibrovka airport, southeast of Gomel. 37 kilometers away from Ukraine. For now, like many other places, it's just a tent city that could accommodate up to 1,000 troops. And following tradition, Wagnerians like to have three axes of penetration. There are rumors of a field camp being built somewhere in western Ukraine, most likely near the town of Brest, where they train the Special Operations Forces of Belarus, or Briest in Russian, or like the OGs remember, Briest Litovsk. From their new bases, Wagner is three and a half hours away from Kiev which they could take into a pincer or DP in the jargon from both the West and the East. Now Wagner has 8,000 troops minimum in Belarus, up to 20,000. 
One possible course of action is that Wagner carries raids and incursions into the north of Ukraine, with groups of 500 to 800 men just like the Ukrainians did in Belgorod in May and June. These Wagnerians' deep reconnaissance groups could engage in partisan warfare and smear the rear of the Ukrainian front. This would force the Ukrainian command to shift much-needed reserves along this 1,000-kilometer border, possibly thousands of men. And the fact that most of this territory between Belarus and Ukraine is made of dense forests would make Wagnerian infiltrations even harder to detect for Ukraine. Apart from guerrilla actions, Uncle Prigozhin's men could be bolder. By trying to capture one medium-sized city such as Lutsk, Rivne, Zhytomyr, and Chernihiv, Lutsk and Rivne would threaten Ukraine's vital supply lines with Poland, whereas Zhytomyr and Chernihiv could be used as springboard for an attack on Kiev. The added benefit of this strategy is that it, they would use Wagner's experience in urban warfare. So who knows, perhaps... Those are their plans for the winter campaign. Meanwhile, from the Belarusian border, theoretically, Wagnerian forces are only three hours away from Warsaw and a 35-minute drive to Vilnius. So if you're from Lithuania and you like to troll Wagner on Twitter behind your screen, watch out. Next thing you know, they'll be knocking at your door with a shovel. According to the representatives of the Lithuanian army, the processes taking place in the neighboring country do not pose an additional threat to Lithuania. Bro, they're way too chill about this. Come on, even Poland is nervous and they have 10 times more troops. Just kidding, we know exactly why. And because of this, Poland's Ministry of Defense stated that they're preparing for various scenarios. In a poll done in August 2023, 50% of Poles considered Wagner to be a threat to Poland. It also reports that the Ukrainian and Polish command held a meeting regarding the presence of the PMC Wagner in Belarus. Perhaps we could expect joint operations in the future. Here's footage of the transfer of two Polish battalions to the border with Belarus. And in this video from Latvia, a column of at least 10 armored vehicles did the same thing. Then, on the 7th of August, the head of the Polish border guard, General Tomasz Praga, asked the Ministry of Defense to move another 1,000 troops to the Polish-Belarusian border. Poland just announced that it would send a total of 10,000 troops to the border. 4,000 will directly support the border guard and 6,000 will be in reserve. This is where I have to talk about another rumor that spread after Wagner's mutiny. That Wagner was urgently sent to Belarus to prevent a Polish military intervention against the country. If such an invasion of Belarus was actually planned, Wagner would have built fortifications all along the Polish border. Yet, they didn't. But notice the way Poland painfully sends troops to the border. Always in small batches, it doesn't seem very planned or coordinated. And the Polish army also has not set up any field hospitals, which is the number one clue of an impending offensive. For many years now, Poland already has the 18th Mechanized Division stationed near the Belarusian border. This division is composed of three armored and mechanized brigades, for a total of just under 8,000 troops in peacetime. That would mean one-to-one -one against Wagner. But according to this article from Reuters, Polish army troops stand guard as part of the 12th and 17th Mechanized Brigades are starting to move to the east of the country. This is when Germany really has to take a deep breath and not let old demons ravage them. <laughs> Leave Poland alone. Now Poland already built a wall at the border with Belarus because of issues they had with illegal migration. However, apparently Belarusian smugglers know ways around it. For the Polish military, the worst area to defend would be on the south side, near the towns of Narevka, Cheremcha, and Bialowieża. Coincidence, this is also where the two Belarusian helicopters crossed into Polish airspace. It's a difficult terrain made of swamps and dense forests that are very easy to hide in. And coincidence number two, it's right next to the Wagnerian base of Briest, where they train the Belarusian special forces. What's clear is that for the West, there's no more plausible deniability regarding Wagner. Any attack by the Wagner PMC group will be considered an attack by the Russian government. 
However, this is where Wagner could do something very sneaky. Look, Wagner could help the smugglers sneak people into Europe and create a new migrant crisis. The PMC could also get a good amount of money from this operation. We know 16,000 illegal migrants crossed the Polish-Belarus border during all of 2022. What if Wagner increases this to 100,000? By blowing up parts of the wall, for example, Russia could use this crisis as a bargaining chip to put pressure on European countries. And in this scenario, NATO can't do anything. And according to the latest reports, Poland plans to create a special sapper battalion. This unit will be deployed in the city of Augustów, in the Suwalki corridor between Belarus and Kaliningrad. This battalion is said to be equipped with the most modern weapons. We're talking K2 Black Panther and Abram tanks, K9 Thunder and Krab self-propelled howitzers, and they will also be equipped with unmanned systems codenamed Gladius. Hypothetically, it would be very hard for Wagner's light infantry to really do something against this armored battalion. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, make sure to check out my Patreon or PayPal. The link is in the description below.